will look at the finished painting and are disappointed with it? Uh, no, no, not really. I mean, I was obviously, I, was, I wasn't disappointed. I was, I was certain. Uh, and, and I'm not disappointed because if I'm disappointed, it's not finished. Right. So I've got to, you get, you got to get to the point where it uh, is as good, as good. But it's not even that. It's just, uh, it's complete. It's, it's finished. Therefore, you can't be disappointed by it. Because it's uh, you wouldn't have started it. I wouldn't have started it uh, to end up being, being disappointed by it. I think that one of the most important things, if you're painting, and this works, uh, if you're an amateur painter, if you're a uh, professional on any level, the, the most important thing I can say is don't lose concentration. If you if you if you try, you think I'd like to paint, don't start. Oh. <laughs> you know, don't do that because you won't have anything. You've got to think about every mark. You don't have to be slow about it. You can be really fast, but you've got to be, you have to be uh, convinced by what you're doing. You have to concentrate. It's, an, it's a tiring business. At the end of the day, you want to feel drained because what you've done is spend your entire time thinking and being physically active with the piece. If you at the end of the day say, oh, I feel really nice, I'm just going to have a beer. Well, you do that. <laughs> You're allowed. Well, in the old days, but do such things with ease. Um, yeah, but that's, yeah, keep, keep concentrating. Once you feel over-relaxed about it, you've, uh, you've lost a plot, in my term, in my people. Great. Um, I, I sort of, I'm quite interested in going back a bit just for a, a few minutes to sort of talk about how you started out really as a painter yeah. um, uh, and get some kind of understanding of what kind of clicked and made you, uh, you know, I know that you obviously, your family, a very creative sort of family yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and everything, but I, I think on a personal basis, I was sort of quite interested to know how your path kind of really became focused in on, yeah. on painting as it has done. Yeah, well, that's, I suppose we can do a little potted history uh, without being too boring. <laughs> uh, um, at school, I was the person who was best at art in the class and got the art prize and s stuff like that, which is which for what that's worth. I, uh, I studied architecture for four terms and I enjoyed it, but I wanted to realise I was enjoying it with all the drawings. I, I, you know, we had a project to go and um, find a building and draw it, and I, you know, I, I did. Well, actually, I used a repeatograph to draw with those days, which is an architectural pen. Uh, gets clogged up all the time. You have to keep cleaning this nib. It's a nib which is a very fine tube with an even finer filament inside it, and you have to work with it vertically. It's a stupid way to draw, really. But I, I had great fun with that at the time, uh, and I loved, and I, I enjoyed my course. But the, you know, apart from having a resounding uh, flash of light in the Oxford Circus when I suddenly was almost blinded by the light that was drenched in everything I looked at, um, and that's an interesting thing because I, I remember it was the sixties. Several of my friends were taking acid and saying, hey, this is a really cool thing to do, an eight-hour acid trip, and I see all this come, and I thought, well, actually, I think you do it without, without the time. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, see it, it's you all didn't, there. You didn't need the acid. Oh, I also hated the sort of thing, I'm out of control for eight hours. It, never, it was never my job, no mm -hmm. choice. Pint of Guinness with Dimmy Bay one. And, and, and uh, I wasn't even very keen on that often, actually. I found that sent me to sleep and I was thinking, well, actually, I want to wake up and get on with the day. So I wasn't very good at all those sort of things. I mean, I tried a few things, but not with any great enthusiasm, but Guinness, very enthusiastic <laughs> for many years. I think, uh, overly, probably, one might say, but um, here we are. Um, um, yeah, so I can't remember where I was now. Well, yeah, I think it was the colour. Oh, yeah, the yes, colour, sorry, yes. Where you started out from mm. and how... 
Yes, so, yeah. It's a pretty major decision, yeah. Yeah. becoming an artist. Yeah. Um, um, well, you know, funnily, I mean, I always presumed I was going to do something creative. It just, I mean, coming from a creative background, it wasn't unusual. You know, a lot of, a lot of people say to their parents, I want to go to art school, and they say, oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't go, do something nice. You know, you can paint as a hobby. But it'd be a dreadful thing to do. If you would ever make a living, some like that. Well, of course they're right. But that, but they, they accept it's quite hard to make a living out of it. Um, but it, you know, it's not in many ways. Um, but you know, so it, was, it wasn't something that there was uh, there was a barrier against it for me. Uh, but I just had to make my decision as to what I really wanted to do. And so I left architectural college. I worked on the Cold War for five months, which I. It was very interesting. I quite enjoyed it until I enjoyed it when I was busy, and I was pretty. You know, I got very strong. I could throw two bags of coal at the lorry driver, especially the cheaper ones. You know, they'd catch them, and then you know, it's good fun. And it got really boring <laughs> when the spring came, and they decided to keep me on. I don't know why, really. Um, but then you had to go around cleaning the coal wharf, you know, picking up bits of paper on the. You know, so that's when I realised this is this is only a job for the winter. I left that and, and started making toy soldiers. In fact, uh, I've made toy soldiers for big, they're quite big. They're about that big, swingy arms, uh, very sixties, uh, painted, painted faces. I've got a few of them somewhere. But I work. I, I sold them at uh, uh, Heels and um, Liberties, a few places like that. Um, uh, and I had, you know, I got, I got quite good, or big orders, but it's hard to paint twice so <laughs> all this detail. And you know, I mean, so I mean, it wasn't going to be. A, it, it was a, it was a stopgap for me, really, and I enjoyed it at the time. And then I went to art, uh, art school, um, began realised I was going to do fine art painting. Uh, I went to Falmouth, um, started painting. I was very dedicated abstract painter. Um, but I also began to make film. Uh, and my, my final year, I just really spent animating. Um, and I made this sort of two K minute film that explored, I mean, it, it, was, it was a vehicle for me to explore all the different processes of animation. Uh, and I, you know, was, I enjoyed that. I had fun doing that. Um, and I came out and I did find lots of things. I did model making for architectural, you know, you, the things you do uh, when you <coughs> try to earn a dollar. Uh, and I quite like doing architectural model making. But eventually came down here, I came down here to work, this is getting big boring, isn't it? No, 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 no. Sure. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I, mean, I, don't, I don't dwell so on the past. Is this is like mid 70s, are we talking uh, about? Like, I, 73. Yeah. I think it was. Uh, I came down here, my father had moved down here from Brixton. Uh, no, actually he was in, he moved to Surrey and then to Brixton. Uh, sorry, to Wittersham. Uh, and he was, he was animating at the time. And he got, a, he got a job to make a film on contraception for the World Health Organization. <laughs> Uh, and he, I mean, he done the cut the Polish team. He, he, was, he was doing all, all from his bedroom, but he needed somebody to help him because it's quite a complex film. Uh, so I came and joined him. That it was really, it was, I had good fun down here um, making this film with him, which was a sort of funny thing, really, because it was a film on contraception that had to be seen everywhere. So it had to be inoffensive to the whole world. <laughs> which is, <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. It doesn't work. The remains sort of some film with these sort of slightly non-sexual beings who ran behind palm trees and made babies on islands. Nice film, but it didn't need a nurse to explain the whole process. Uh, they, they, you know, they talked about it. Um, and having arrived in Wittesham, uh, I began to quite like it down here. I thought this is uh, good fun. And uh, I started playing in the pubs, uh, which was nice. And uh, I found myself a cottage in Peasmarsh and then thought I ought to take myself in hand and get 
working properly. So after a New Year's Eve party, five days I think it was after it, it was a long and heavy party, uh, I set myself a task, which was to make a painting a day. And I did this for three months. And the painting could be a 10 minute painting or a 10 hour painting. It didn't, that wasn't important. The important thing was to produce. And there were, there was abstract paintings, mainly on paper. And uh, there came a moment, I was looking out the window towards the end of this period, and there was a hop garden. When, when there was still the hop gardens around uh, uh, Pease Marsh and, that, and this area, before they all went to France. You know, they, went, they bought hops from France, and all our hop gardens disappeared, I seem to remember. Uh, but anyway, the, the hop garden was there, and you know, it was, it was an interesting structure, really, because it was on a hill, the, the hill slept down, all these poles uh, made, a, made a pattern, and I started to use that abstractedly, then I thought, well, actually, maybe I could, uh, I could do something visually, you know, figuratively with it. And um, that sort of made me start to think, maybe this is actually something I can do, and it's, it's not, it's not a, there's no reason not to do it. And I turned myself into a figurative painter. Uh, which uh, was, you know, was nice, I enjoyed it, and uh, that's still do. So here we are, uh, so many years later, uh, figurative painter uh, with a burst of colour from uh, Oxford Circus in 1965, uh, loving colour. So there you go. Uh, there was me, I, I did originally paint mainly people after I left the, well, I painted the landscapes, but I painted a lot of paintings of people, uh, my wife especially. And then the children, when they came along, and my friend Miranda Leonard, who used to be here, Michael B. White, and he was a skinny boy. Uh, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, and then, uh, then I went to Sissinghurst. Uh, Pam and Sybil, the gardeners, were still there, who were Vita Sackville West gardeners. Uh, and I suddenly discovered the joy of the garden. Uh, and that really because Vita Sackville West, as you know, designed Sissinghurst as a series of rooms. So I was presented as a, somebody who was painting interiors with um, carpets and decorated um, hanging, wall hangings and lots of stuff and clothes that had patterns on them. I suddenly walked into this and I had this uh, a very similar thing, uh, but as a garden. And I began playing with uh, 83. 1983, I started painting Sissinghurst. Uh, did a whole series of those, and it sort of, and I began to look around. It's very hard to find anything as good as Sissinghurst in those days. Uh, but I've been, I've, and, and I've travelled around the country, painting lots of gardens, painting landscapes, still painting people. I still did portraits occasionally, but I haven't done a portrait, well, since before I was ill. Um, but, you know, I, I like, I just, like doing what I do. Simple as that, really. And the bottom line is, I like to do what I do. Uh, here I am, uh, a lucky boy. I think um, you know that comes across very much from yeah, I think so. the work as well. And um, um, mm. I, I, I um, was listening to you talking about that. Um, uh, some of the structures, the hop, yeah, um, from the past. You know that whole hop picking and uh, landscapes and things and um, you know I think we still see it a bit in yeah. you know, if you oh, think about yeah yeah um, is that Sarah's garden <coughs> yeah that's yes yeah. yeah. Sarah well, Raven that's Sarah well, Raven's garden yeah. in all of the gardens you've got these very strong <coughs> strong <coughs> colours but actually a lot of uh, well, structural yeah. composition yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. and um, you know, with this being well, most garden, most garden gardeners mm -hmm. use an underlying structure. You know, sometimes it's very obvious, and sometimes it melts into the garden. Um, and it's very, you know, it's 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 a useful tool to use for me to use, and for some people it would be without interest. But I like I like that element of of um, architecture. It comes into the uh, gardens, and yeah. So I think, you know, and the, I mean, and also the topiary is architectural. Um, yeah. Okay. Should we kind of open it up, see if anybody 
wants to we could do them. ask you anything. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, no, fine. Yeah, yeah I was just, one of the things that drew me to your work was how luminous they are. And the luminosity of the face. And I just mm -hmm. was wondering how you did that. Well, I have a feeling it's probably because of the underpinning. Uh, because, I, I mean, the underpainting is quite bold, it's quite, uh, um, it, it's quite high key, really. I mean, it's not, it's, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think of it as high key, but I, I, if I were to, uh, if I were to look at it and try and analyse it without being me, I'd say it is quite high key. Uh, and, but that means that when you start painting over the top, you have a colour uh, that will uh, add shine, add resonance to the painting you do over the top, and that gives it. I think that gives it a sort of uh, sense of like it. No, 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 no. It's just, it's just. I mean, uh, you know, it's just paints, so and I mix them up, and uh, but I don't then get sludgy. I can tell you that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. As a just as a slightly off the wall, but. Yeah. Does your music have any influence on your painting, ever? Well, you know something, Ian. Um, uh, no. <laughs> but what it does, what it's done all my life, is it's, it's given me two strings to my bow, and a painter's life is it's quite a lonely one, because, you know, you... Uh, you work by yourself, or by the, the, the very, very nature of the business is it something you do by yourself. So for years I've, done, I've had this isolated day and then I go home, have some food, you know, do whatever, and then I go out and I'm fronting a band, you know. Mm. With every lots of, you know, always been, always been a popular band, my band. <laughs> Uh, so we've always had these people there, and uh, it's 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 a very different part of my character that comes out. But I think it's actually I think it's a fantastic combination. I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, art school people from art school became in, got involved in bands. Uh, but for me, for my character, it's been I think I think they're great foils for each other. You know, though they don't interrelate in that way. But they just keep me sane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. The back there. Um, yeah. Louis, you've got some of the works on the walls are monochrome. Yeah. And you've got three there that are monochrome with a bit of colour on. I know. So first question: What what sort of decides you to do mm -hmm. something in monochrome? And secondly, what about these three? Is this a new departure or what? Well, it's, it's, it's worked their way back. They, yes, it is a new departure. Mm -hmm. Um, although, uh, you know, the, the monograms have quite often had colour and sometimes gone on leaf. Uh, <coughs> but uh, the drawings come from a sort of, I've been, as a, uh, forever, I've loved Samuel Palmer. And that sort of, the intensity of blackness he got in his drawings. Always, uh, you know, I, I, I would always, Come back to thinking about those, and 2008, I <coughs> thought I'd like to do a series of uh, monogram drawings. It, I, mean, that's, I mean, I always draw, but they've ne they've not been for display. They haven't. They've been for personal use only. Uh, and in 2008, I I looked at the Samuel Palmer again, and. Uh, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to play with black and white on paper to see what happens. And I, I produced, I mean, the first ones, uh, first drawings, ones, ones is an odd word, isn't it? The first drawings were landscapes. And then I went to Rhonda because uh, my parents lived in a place called El Colmenar. Uh, which is the Station Garcine uh, in Andalusia. Oh. And they lived there for 16 years until uh, they came back when, you know, climbing up, they lived up, a, they lived on a mountain, which was, uh, um, it was, uh, 
national, national uh, some, some, sorry, I can't, uh, nature reserve is, I suppose, the simplest way to put it. Well, it was called something else. But it was a nature reserve. You couldn't build on it. You could only live in existing buildings. And they had a, they had a finca there and some land. And they had 16 fantastic years there. They went to all the Spanish weddings and, and parties. Um, um, but they had to come back. But when they died, or they obviously they didn't die at the same time, but within four years, um, uh, my mother said to me, I'd like my ashes to go back to uh, El Colmenar. And I had a road trip with them, with my two sons. Uh, and we hadn't done that since then, uh, you know, like in that way, well, we'd never done that ever, just the three of us. Um, but we had a fantastic journey. Uh, we listened to Ian Rankin. <laughs> story all the way there and all the way back you know, and it's very long story it's great it's a great story standing in another man's grave very good thank you it's all road it's all about driving down scotland down roads and we did this road trip um slightly sunnier no rain uh we had a fantastic time it was so nice to be over there with the boys men as they uh, were by then still are of course uh, we, I've, I've, I had some places, I used to go and pick my parents up when they were getting older because occasionally they couldn't actually get back. But we'd always, we'd always uh, plan our journeys back to have good places to eat, good places to stay. Um, so I, I, I reiterated that with the boys. And we got to the, and we got to, oh come on, I got to the village. And I started looking at the palm trees. I thought, good God, they're so beautiful. Um, and I started a series of drawings of palm trees. Uh, they, 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 I, mean, I love those. The next palm trees I found, my youngest son's uh, wife is French, and her family live in Nice. So I went, we went to visit them. Uh, and again, you know, you go down, uh, 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 Avenue des Anglaises, uh, and there's these palm, beautiful palm trees, very, kept very differently to the Spanish ones. I mean, that's what's so exciting as well. You know, the Spanish ones are looked after in a different way. Uh, and it's, it's the gardeners of those, uh, those countries have a different approach. Um, so, I mean, I did a whole series of palm trees. Uh, I, knew, I was thinking about doing palm trees for this exhibition, and I, I, was look, I went to Kew. I was looking at cued palm trees, but interestingly, I couldn't quite, I started drawing them, but I, I thought, I don't know, I'm not quite, they're not working for me. So, uh, and then I thought about the drawing for colour, and that um, that worked for me. So that, you know, they were, that's how that lot works. <laughs> and I'm gonna carry on. Whether the colour stays, I don't know. I, you can never tell what you will do next, except what I, the only one, the one thing I can say is it will be something. <laughs> and it'll involve painting and it'll involve drawing and it'll involve me hanging pictures on walls. Yeah. But I don't know about the music here. <laughs> I'd love to do some more, but I'm also not certain yet. Uh, well, I heard whisper you had actually played a bit. I did, yes, yes, yes. But that was against my better judgment. <laughs> like most of the things I've done in life. Has <laughs> there any, anybody else got? Um, Just have you got a favourite season? Um, well, you know, I think you have to enjoy the seasons when they come. Obviously, with gardens, yeah. With, with gardens, it's. Uh, most of my gardens are fairly, you know, the spring to autumn. Uh, but I actually, I mean, in the winter they can look fantastic as well. I did a whole series of great Dixter garden paintings in the frost. You know, but you've got to get there early because it's. Uh, well, it, well the people own them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't own any. I, I own one, two, three, four, seven paintings of mine, which I've tried to keep. And I, but you know, I try to keep a painting, and suddenly I've got to show. And I need another painting, which is sort of what you do about that. I have to let my painting go. It goes on to put some 
somebody comes and buys it. <laughs> yeah, but the winter's always great. Yeah, but you know, you do. Um, there, oh, there will be some. But you've got to get into the carriage. It's quite a Yeah, I know it is. So that, that's well. Unfortunately, the things have changed. Now people buy. Uh, when the catalogue comes out, you know, and you've got to, which is sort of unfair, but but now that you, if one person does it, we all have to do it, you know. So, but I will be doing more. <laughs> I'm not stopped. And winter's coming, and means that I'll be doing some winter. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you mentioned um, Samuel Palmer and you mentioned Stanley Spencer. Yeah. I wonder if you have any other or um, any. Artists you you really consider as heroes that that you look up to. Uh, well, the heroes isn't the word, but I mean, obviously, I, uh, I have a huge affection for Matisse. Um, um, but it's it. I mean, I, I, there's a lot. Of, I mean, I like you know, if I go and see somebody's work, uh, and I enjoy the moment. Um, I get, you know, I get that pleasure, but I don't, I mean, and it's very hard to, I like paintings, I suppose I'd put it like that, I like paintings, I enjoy looking at them, I enjoy owning them, uh, not mine, obviously, but other people's, um, but the, the, this, this, that's separate from what I do. I found that when I, when I got seriously into painting again, I actually had to stop looking at everybody's work. Because I mean, I'd start. I mean, I remember starting to paint, and I just been to see a Gauguin exhibition. And I said, "These, these sort of Gauguin bits of fruit. I don't want to eat that. be my fruit. Uh, but it's going to be fruit." Um, so, so I, I, I cut myself off from looking at stuff for a long time, uh, and, and now I have, you know, I mean, for, for quite some time now. Also, I've had the confidence to go and look at. Uh, other paintings without it being, in, without it uh, impinging into what I do. Uh, so but yes, I love lots of painters, uh, but hard to give names really, you know. Sorry. 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 You okay? Yes, I'm Go ahead. Now, all it was, you, you, you were talking about the mechanics of how you actually get a painting together from, from the actual starting of looking and yeah. walking out. Do you ever actually paint a picture up in, on plein air, so to speak? Or? No, I'm not. Very, I'm not. It's not for me, you see, because I like to. I like the distance that going back to the studio gives me, because it um, it it's part of the process of the painting becoming its own entity. I think that's. I think that's how that works with it. I did try it once, but I couldn't. My radio kept falling off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically by, by doing that, it becomes your your vision rather yeah. than the actual yes, production. Yes, because I'm not. Yes, I mean I'm not. I'm, it's it's not. It's not about a, It's not about recording. It's about making it painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But although, of course, I am using the information I've looked at and found and seen to make that painting. But it's a different thing, you know, for me. I, I, I know a lot of people love being out there, and I can understand it. Uh, but I, but it's not my way of working. So. You haven't got a working notebook, you know, for you know. No, I, I mean, I, I've got, I draw, I do, but they're quite, you know, like, quite quick. I mean, they're notes, they're notes in my brain, really. Yeah. How are we doing? Do you work on one, or do you have several on the go? Uh, once, I mean, I've got these primary paintings, uh, but once I pluck one off the wall, I tend to work then and through to its finish. Okay. Very rarely do I stop. Uh, I just, I mean, I don't know, it just that's how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I was going to make an observation about the, the, the lack of people. Your paintings, but you do talk about painting. Yeah, yes, I do, yeah. But I think artists, I don't want to be, uh, you know. It's, They're not inhabited. Well, no, because it's not about a, you know, there's, you know, there were probably five people walking through that when I was looking at it, but they weren't. 
there all the time. But that was there all the time. And 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 my sort of bringing it together. But the people had left the left the room. <laughs> Louis, why do you like sheep so much? They well, <laughs> 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 when I moved down here, the farm I lived on was a sheep farm uh, in Peasmarsh. We had 600 uh, ewes, and you just look at them. Yeah, you know, I, I did used to go out and draw them. And the thing about drawing sheep is you're just going to keep moving. Yeah, yeah, but so you, that's, I think that's probably the. And to that, and the fact that in the winter, from being the lightest thing in the landscape, they can become the darkest thing. Because if it snowed, they sit there as this sort of darkness against the snow. Whereas for the whole of the summer, They've been the, you know, bright white object. And I like that. I think that's a, that's an exciting thing to see. You know? And if you paint, if you paint, if you paint uh, anything but Romney Marsh sheep around here, all the farmers get it. <laughs> <laughs> As you can't paint. Yeah. Yeah. So never cows or pigs or horses. <laughs> never black faces. Yeah, exactly. I do. I like the black faces. Yeah. You see, I, I mean, I do use them. But I do get a bit of stick sometimes, <laughs> gnawing out the cloud. Yeah. There's a gentleman in there. Oh, you've got a few quick questions. One yeah. is, uh, when I paint sheep, I normally start falling asleep. I'm very especially on that road yeah. from plain down to rye. Yeah. The project. I was going to ask you about um, Cornwall, because we go to the Ross Gardens and the yeah. and the Eden Project and so on. Are you like the area around the river Foley sort of river? I mean, I, 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 the, 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 um, what's that? Yeah, there's a particular garden down there. Oh, there's, yes, uh, Tresco, uh, not Tresco, Trabar. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Trabar is, I love Trabar. Uh, the light's quite nice down there, especially in the autumn. Yeah, well, they, they, always, they always, always said that uh, uh, the artists all moved down to Cornwall because of the light. Yeah, uh, uh, and obviously, uh, when the Newling Group started, oh, was it, that was the River Fowl. Yeah, that Fowl. was the Fowl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the Newling lot, they, they ended up in Newling because the train went as far as Penzance, yeah. and Newling was the nearest place you could walk to, right. little fishing village. Uh, but actually, when I came here, I thought there was a similarity of light quality here. Um, so I mean, there's, I mean, it's. it's I, I don't. I mean, I don't miss the Cornish light. I love. I love Cornwall. I still go back. I look at the gardens. I still go to Zena. I like to drink in the Zena's arms oh. uh, for old times' sake. That's a famous old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great place. Great pub. Still, still all right as well. It's not been, uh, you know, it's uh, retained its integrity. Yeah, and also, it says in one of the articles that you're influenced by Flint. Is that is that? Is that, uh, no, not was me. No, not Clint. I wasn't in Clint. No, no, that was somebody else. I can't oh. think it would have been. Oh, oh, so maybe somebody, um, somebody presumed I had uh, Clintian. <laughs> There's uh, some silver or something. Maybe something of him Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't particularly. Oh, but not, uh, not gold. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, I do use gold. Oh, you do use gold? Yeah, gold up there. Yeah, all right. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's probably somebody else's observation. I wouldn't, um, again, because I'm not, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not looking to uh, have a link to other painters, although obviously no. we all do. But in terms of my practice, it's just the way I work it, you know. Uh, and I look, I mean, I, I do like Clint. As a painter, but um, I don't see it as an as a influence in that manner. Yeah, you know, I thought uh, I thought copying Clint for me was, was, was very very good. So that and yeah. anything else, um, yeah. I, I actually enjoyed copying, just copying. Yeah, yeah. You know, the fun Siegler, that sort of yeah. period. And yeah. also, you must be influenced by Cezanne. You must like Cezanne. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and I think there's a bit of Pizarro in there as well. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, honestly, I, I'm standing on shoulders. Yeah, I know that. Well, you always want to deny that you're influenced by other theatres. But, you know, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, the, you're the product of the things you've seen. Um, because, you know, we, would, I mean, we wouldn't even begin to be interested if the things you've seen haven't moved you. 
and obviously uh, these things uh, have moved me. But it's it's it's, a, it's part of one's formation, really. Um, you know, looking at things. Yeah. Anyway, there we are. discussions at home about each other's work took place or not because um, you know you, you said you started out as an abstract artist and that work is pretty mm. abstract yeah. um, I would be quite interested yeah. if it, you know well you yes have I mean, dialogue together uh, we do all the time Dad always tells me if I've got something wrong, I get really irritated. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day I go, well, she's right. right? Yeah. 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 I, and I tell her, I, I give her the same information. We, we cross so fertilize, yes, we do all the time. Yeah. All the work. time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, so, yes. Yes. and especially when I was at home working. Yes. You know, it's harder in my studio because by the time I've finished it, I've actually finished it. So there's, there's, it's harder to have an input into it um, yes. but yes when I was at home especially you know but always um, because I come home and dad's working because her studio is in the basement uh, yes yeah, so I, I have my I have my I, g I give my advice <laughs> yes. but she does the same thing yes, you know, yes. You know, very important good you know. yeah have, have your children followed uh, my eldest is a barrister so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Before, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my youngest is an artist. So yeah, yes, there's been we have fifty percent. Um, yeah. We have a rebel who's a barrister, and we have a conformist who's the artist. <laughs> oh, it's interesting you talk about Cornwall actually, and um, it, it's. Um, you know, I'm kind of recent um, DFL type who's come down to Rye. Um, but there is something very special about Rye and the surroundings, which is, um, it seems to keep coming up when we talk to artists. Um, yeah, yeah. And, um, I, I don't know, I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah, right. um, but it, it does strike me that you, you've got this really rich, um, cultural support yeah. around the creative people here yeah. um, that keeps re uh, kind of reimagining itself mm. all the time and re redeveloping. Yeah, no, it's true, and it's uh, it's. Um, I think partly the strength of down here was that it it was hard to be able to commute. You know, originally. I mean, it's, yeah. it's easier now because we get high speed. But because it was, I mean, you could, you could commute if you had to go up once a week. Mm. You know, so a lot of artists and musicians all moved down here because we realized we didn't have to live in London. Mm. Uh, we could live here, have the, pleasant, uh, the pleasure of uh, country living, and maybe even be able to afford to live somewhere and buy it. Yeah. You know, so there was that advantage. Uh, but also, it, you know, there's a lot. There's, there's been a lot of painters here, a lot, and a lot of writers, um, and musicians, and it's just, it's had a good vibe. You know, mm. if that word to be used, and I mean, yeah, of course it has. Yes, it's yeah. had a good vibe. It's so. like a hub, isn't it? Yeah, really, yeah, yeah I think so. And, I think. Um, yeah, in fact, it's the sort of the strength you said not being able to get to London <laughs> is, is it's also yeah. the thing yeah. that was thrown at some artists that yeah. we. Yeah, hist historically, you know, some of the sort of local artists like Diana Lowe and things like yeah. that. Well, they never went to London, so they didn't make it. Sort of yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. we've gone beyond that now, in that mm -hmm. you can you can operate yeah. um, here. I mean, Burrow. Yeah. Made it. Yeah. <laughs> then he was a genius. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to push him down very hard, and yeah. he'd still be. I mean, the thing about the fantastic thing about Ed Burrow is all those paintings which are drenched in colour are watercolours, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who can work in watercolour and achieve that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's quite, quite unique. Mm -hmm. um, extraordinary, quite extraordinary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's some nice barrows up there yeah. in 
wonder of those who haven't been up there, <laughs> go and see. Go, go and see Burroughs yeah. uh, flower painting. Pres and presumably, the, the, others, the uh, attraction of the art, the, from an artist's point of view, the attraction here, though, is, is as you said, the light, because of the sp sky, isn't it? Because you've got the marsh, you've got more sky than you've yeah. got land, yeah. so you've got much more light. Yeah. Yes, it's right, I mean, the light's good. Yeah. It is good. Um, uh, I think it's, it's, it stays it's fairly constant, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe the I'm here. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I, 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 when I came to live here from far north towards Scotland, it, the, the light hit me for six. Mm -hmm. It was just wonderful. You know, you, you went more than two days with, with light, which you could make use of in various ways. And that, that became very clear when I came to live here. Yeah, it's true. It is true. I've never looked back. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Well, are we running out of steam? I think, I think we've probably, uh, <laughs> um, we've probably got to the uh, yeah. point. Well, uh, I just would like to thank you very much for joining us. I've enjoyed myself, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been really lovely. You know, chatting yeah. to you and finding out about yeah, the work. Good. And, good. You know, well, I hope, I hope it's yeah. um, been uh, informative. Yeah, and I, yeah. yeah, it's such a great show, though, yeah. as well. And yeah, thank uh, you. We're very pleased to be able to host it here. It's wonderful. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to be here till first week of October for people to come and look and to come back and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you ever get to a show and one of your shows and think? Why have they hung it like that? Why didn't they do it that way around? Or uh, how much to say do you have in No, I, I mean... They I, don't let it get that far. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't have an input. Uh, yeah, I, I, and the galleries I share, uh, they're very professional. Mm -hmm. you know? They know what they're doing. Yeah. And that's, yeah, as long as they know what they're doing, I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.